In this video, we're going to talk about relative humidity, vapor pressure, partial pressure, evaporation, condensation, and things of that sort. But now, what exactly is humidity? Now, let's say if you live in a dry place like a desert, it's not very humid. When it's hot, the sweat evaporates instantly. But let's say if you live in a humid environment, like let's say South Florida or somewhere in the South, especially during the summertime. In such places, it's very hot and the sweat doesn't readily evaporate from you when it's humid. And so it, it feels hotter than it actually is. Humidity has to do with the amount of water vapor that's in the air. If there's a lot of water vapor in the air, it's hard for sweat to evaporate from you. But if the air is dry, where there's not much water there, then it's easy for the sweat to evaporate from your face. It's easy to cool down from that. But now there's another term, relative humidity. Relative humidity is a percentage. It varies from 0 to 100%. Well, it can be more than 100% if you have a super saturated situation. We'll talk more about that. But the relative humidity is the ratio between the partial pressure of water and the vapor pressure of water times 100%. The partial pressure of water tells you it gives you an idea of the amount of water that's in the air. Whereas the vapor pressure is, is associated with the maximum amount of water that can be in the air at a given temperature. Now let's say if the partial pressure of water at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, let's say it's about 18 torr. And let's say the vapor pressure of water at that temperature is, well, at that temperature, it is 31.8 torr. So to calculate the relative humidity, let me get a calculator. All you need to do is just divide the two numbers and multiply it by 100%. So 18 divided by 31.8 is about times 100. This is 56.6%. Uh, so that's the relative humidity based on these particular values. Now, those numbers might be meaningless to you unless you understand what the vapor pressure and the partial pressure actually is. So let's talk about that. So I'm going to draw three beakers. In the first beaker, let's say it's an evacuated beaker. There's no gas inside. And let's put water. So there's no other gases inside, and there's no water vapor at this instant. And let's say the temperature is 30 degrees Celsius, which means that the vapor pressure for all three of these uh, beakers will be a constant 31.8 torr. The vapor pressure is a function of temperature. Whenever you increase the temperature, the vapor pressure will increase. So at 30 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is always 31.8 torr. It's never, that value is fixed. It's not going to change. Now the partial pressure of water can vary. The vapor pressure depends on the temperature, but the partial pressure of water depends on how much water vapor is actually in the air. Let's call this beaker A, B, and C. So at A, there's no water vapor in the air, so the partial pressure of water is zero. So what's going to happen? Well, there's two processes that you need to be familiar with, evaporation and condensation. If water goes from the gas phase to the liquid phase, this is known as condensation. 
if it goes from, let's say, the liquid phase to the gas phase, especially at a temperature below its boiling point, this is evaporation. So since there's no water molecules in the air, condensation cannot occur at this point. So the rate of condensation is zero. However, because we have water in a liquid phase, it can go into the gas phase. So some of the water molecules will have enough kinetic energy to escape to the gas phase. So after some time, as water continues to enter the gas phase, you're going to have these H2O molecules in the air. So the partial pressure is no longer zero. It's going to increase to some value. So let's say that this particular value is about 10 torr. Since the temperature is still 30 degrees Celsius, the rate of evaporation is still the same. However, because we have a partial pressure of water in the air, because there's water vapor there, some of the molecules in the air will begin to condense back into the liquid phase. So we have condensation occurring as well. But notice that we have three arrows going up, and one arrow going down. That means that the rate of evaporation exceeds the rate of condensation. So I'm going to say RC, rate of condensation, is less than RE, the rate of evaporation. Whenever, this is true whenever the partial pressure of water is less than the vapor pressure. So whenever the partial pressure of water is less than the vapor pressure, in this case, this is 10. The vapor pressure we said was 31.8. Evaporation will exceed condensation. So water will continue to evaporate. Now eventually, at some point, we're going to have a lot of water molecules in the air. The partial pressure will continue to increase until it reaches the vapor pressure, as long as there's still water to evaporate. If all of the water evaporates, then it stops. But as long as we still have some water in liquid phase, evaporation will continue to occur until the partial pressure equals the vapor pressure. So at beaker C, or situation C, the partial pressure of water is now 31.8 torr, which is equal to the vapor pressure of water at this temperature. So in this case, the rate of evaporation now equals the rate of condensation. At this point, the partial pressure is equal to the vapor pressure whenever evaporation equals condensation. So now we can define what these two types of pressures mean. The partial pressure is simply the pressure exerted by water molecules at any given point. So it's proportional to the number of molecules that is in the, the vapor phase or in the air. The vapor pressure is a specific partial pressure. The vapor pressure is the partial pressure where you've reached a state of equilibrium, where the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation. And that specific value is temperature dependent. It increases with temperature. Because when you raise the temperature, you're going to increase the rate of evaporation. When you increase the kinetic energy of the water molecules, more water molecules are going to go up into the gas phase. And if condensation exceeds, I mean, if evaporation exceeds condensation by raising the temperature, that's going to increase the vapor pressure. So remember, vapor pressure is the partial pressure at which the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation. Now let's talk about the relative humidity. Here, the partial pressure of water is zero. So therefore, the relative humidity is 0%. Now, for this particular beaker, the partial pressure was 10, but the vapor pressure is 31.8. So 10 divided by 31.8 times 100%, that gives us a relative humidity of 31%. Now, for the last example, the partial pressure equals the vapor pressure. So the relative humidity is 100%. So whenever the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation, the relative humidity is 100%. By the way, this temperature is also known as the dew point.
the temperature at which the humidity, the relative humidity is 100%, or when the partial pressure of water equals the vapor pressure of water, that temperature is the dew point. Because if you cool it down any further, condensation will exceed evaporation, and the liquid will begin to condense. In the air, it would appear as fog, or you could see clouds or precipitation occurring. Now let's talk about terms such as saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. The two beakers on the left represents a situation where we have an unsaturated situation. The reason why it's unsaturated is because more water molecules from the liquid phase can enter the gas phase. So the air, it doesn't have, it hasn't reached its maximum amount of water that it can hold. It can hold more water, so it's unsaturated. In the situation on the right, the air above the water has reached a point where it can no longer hold any more water vapor. It reached its maximum potential at that temperature. So we could say the air is saturated with water. It's filled to the max. Whenever the air is saturated with water, the partial pressure equals the vapor pressure. And the dew point is the temperature at that particular situation. Now, how is it possible to get a supersaturated uh, situation? How can we have more water molecules in the air than the air can actually hold? How is that possible? Now, let's say that the temperature is currently 30 degrees Celsius. And the partial pressure of water, let's say it's 27 torr. And we know the vapor pressure of water is 31.8 torr. Now what happens if we decrease the temperature to 20 degrees Celsius? Now keep in mind the vapor pressure is directly related to the temperature. As you increase the temperature, the vapor pressure goes up. So if you decrease the temperature, the vapor pressure of water will go down. So at 20 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure will be 17.5. So what this means is that at a lower temperature, the air can hold less water. Air can hold more water at higher temperatures. The vapor pressure gives you an idea of how much water can be hold or held um, in air. So we can see it's much less. Now, if we can cool the temperature quickly before the vapor pressure decreases, I mean, before the partial pressure of water decreases, let's say if we're able to cool the temperature to 20 degrees Celsius, and let's say that the air still has a partial pressure of 27. Whenever the partial pressure of water is greater than the vapor pressure, if there's more water in the air than the air can actually hold, condensation will occur. So whenever the partial pressure of water exceeds the vapor pressure, the rate of evaporation is less than the rate of condensation, or the rate of condensation is greater than the rate of evaporation, at which point condensation is occurring at this point. So the water vapor in the air will condense into a liquid. Since the temperature of the air is less, the water vapor in the air, they don't have enough kinetic energy to remain in the vapor phase. So eventually they're going to stick together and condense it to a liquid. Now somewhere between 20 and 30, let's put a number to it. Let's say 27. It might not be the exact number, but let's just assume this is the temperature. At some point, the vapor pressure of water will equal the partial pressure of water. And at this point, the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation. If you decrease the temperature any lower, condensation will begin. And this temperature will be the dew point. The temperature at which condensation just begins to occur, that is the dew point. That's when you start seeing the fog and you start seeing liquid condense on the surface. So that's one way you can measure the dew point. You can decrease the temperature of the air until you s begin to see condensation occurring. At that temperature, that is the dew point.
So just to remember, or just to review, whenever the partial pressure of water equals the vapor pressure, the rate of evaporation equals the rate of condensation. And this temperature at which these things are occurring is the dew point, at which point you have 100% relative humidity. Keep in mind, the relative humidity is the ratio between the partial pressure of water and the vapor pressure. It's the ratio between how much water how much water the air can hold compared to let me say that again. The relative humidity is the ratio between how much water is in the air compared to how much the air can actually hold. Now whenever the partial pressure of water, if it's less than the vapor pressure of water, in that case condensation or rather, evaporation is greater than the rate of condensation. So what we have is, and the air is unsaturated. That means it can hold more water vapor, because water can still evaporate into the air. If the partial pressure of water is greater than the vapor pressure, the rate of condensation is greater than the rate of evaporation. So water will condense from the gas phase to the liquid phase. In this situation, because the air has more water vapor than it can actually hold, it is said to be supersaturated with water vapor. And when these two are equal, it is uh, saturated. Now, whenever you have an unsaturated situation, the relative humidity, RH, is less than 100% when it's unsaturated. When it's saturated, the relative humidity equals 100%. When it's supersaturated, the air has too much water vapor, so it has to condense. But at that instant, the relative humidity should be above 100, since this the partial pressure of water is greater than the vapor pressure.